Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today we are reading Exodus chapter 11. As we meditate on this chapter, may the Lord speak to each one of us. This chapter deals about the 10th plague, the death of the firstborn announced. Exodus chapter 11 is mainly about the last and most devastating plague that God delivered to Egypt, which was the plague on the firstborn. This was a judgment that God said would cause Pharaoh to let Hebrews go. God told Moses to tell Israel to collect silver and gold from their neighbors because he was preparing them for something big. Moses was highly regarded among the officials of the Pharaoh and among the people. God also gave the people of Israel favor in the sight of Egyptians. Moses then went to Pharaoh and told him what God had said. He explained to him that at midnight the last plague would descend upon the Egypt, which was that all the firstborn children would die. This included all the firstborns from the son of Pharaoh to the firstborn of the lowest slave. God even said all the firstborn of the cattle would not be spared. Moses told Pharaoh that there would be a terrible cry throughout the land of the Egypt when all the firstborns were taken away. He went on to say that Israel would be spared by God and all the children would be remain safe because they are God's people. In the last section we see Pharaoh's final chance. The Lord told Moses that he would harden the heart of Pharaoh so that his wonders may be exhibited. He also said that after the last plague has taken place, all the Pharaoh's servants would bow down to God and they would be able to exit the land of Egypt. Moses then left the presence of Pharaoh in anger. Even though Moses and Aaron performed wonders before the Pharaoh's eyes, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he still refused to let the people of Israel go. Give a second chance. God had an astonishing amount of patience with stubborn Pharaoh. He could have sent the final plague immediately after Pharaoh's first refusal to free the Hebrews. Instead, he began a systematic course of action to give a ruler a chance to change his mind. Nevertheless, Pharaoh became increasingly hostile to his negotiations with Moses and Aaron. An agreement was finally reached after the last plague, the death of the firstborn. Though even then, Pharaoh's true character resurfaced as he pursued the fleeing Hebrews. In spite of Pharaoh's stubbornness, the long and difficult process of persuasion was worth pursuing. Jumping immediately to the harshest act of discipline eliminates the opportunity for people to come to their senses. The next point, Moses, the plagues and the law of victory. The law of victory teaches that leaders find a way for the team to win. In this case, several plagues were required to convince Pharaoh to let God's people go. And how can we describe Moses' attitude during those plagues? What enabled him to win the victory he sought? Various points listed here. He was patient. He was consistent. He was discerning. He was prayerful. He was tenacious. He was credible. The next point we see is Moses, the unexpected leader. What words come to mind when you think of great leaders? It's doubtful that meek appears at the top of your list. Yet, that is the precise word God chose to describe Moses. In Numbers chapter 12 verse 3, declares that man, Moses, was very humble, more than all men who are on the face of the earth. In Acts chapter 7 verse 22, we see although Moses was learned in all the wisdom of Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds, we have no records of significant accomplishment during his first 40 years. So far as we know, his first attempt to exerting his influence to help the people resulted in murder of an Egyptian and his flight from country. The next 40 years he spent in Midian, a time of uneventful. You don't have to be natural to become a great leader. You simply need a heart of God and a teachable spirit. And most of the great leaders in the scripture were made and not born. The life lessons in this chapter are about grace. Situation. In this passage, nine of the ten plagues in Egypt had already occurred. Pharaoh, despite the pleading of Moses, refused to give in. God told to Israel to prepare the Passover, which would protect his people from the final plague. Observation. God did not protect the Israel because they were better than Egyptians, but because they were his people. God gives grace to his followers, whether through the blood of the Lamb or the blood of the Lamb Jesus, not based on merit, but on his loving kindness. Inspiration God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The Application God has given grace to you, an unconditional gift, receive it and accept it. Look for opportunities to be graceful to those around you. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, 
for by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourself it is a gift of god may the lord bless this short meditation in edification of our spiritual lives and continue to speak to us as we meditate on his chapters amen